Welcome to a video from thedigitallifestyle.com. In this video, we're going to look at what's new in Windows 10 uh, Redstone 4, or Windows 10 Spring Creators Update. As I recorded this video, it's still not got an official name, but I think Windows 10 Spring Creators Update is what it's going to be. But it's going to be the 1803 release, uh, so March 2018, probably available end of March, beginning of April. And uh, there's some good new features in it, actually. So in this video, I'm just going to highlight some of my favorite new features. There are more than I'm going to talk about today, but uh, these are some of my favorite. So the first one, and I'm doing this on a pre-release build. You can see the build string down, or the build watermark in the bottom corner here. But the first new feature that I'm going to look at is called Timeline. And if I tap that uh, there, you can, sweep, you can see we've got this new Timeline view where... It looks back in time at um, applications that I've got open or I've opened and I can scroll back and look through. So you see here where I've had been on websites. Uh, you can see here going back to March, uh, going back earlier in March, different websites I've been on. And uh, it supports Microsoft Office. Um, as you can see here, there's a review about Hive Home. And it supports uh, Microsoft Edge and some other Microsoft applications. The not all applications currently support timeline. There's just a few actually, but uh, it's very handy for flicks up going back in time. So if I wanted to go back, uh, say, and look at here and look at this video, I can tap on that, and that'll take me back to that web page that I was looking at. And um, in fact, the two tabs I had open at the time and it'll open those tabs. So it's a way of sort of going back in time and looking at applications and that you had open and being able to find what you were doing. So here you can see it's opened these tabs and I could just continue on from where I left off. Um, so it's a nice feature. Here you can see, if I go back again, this is effectively the task switcher. So now I've just opened File Explorer and I can switch between the two, but I can also go back in time. You notice also this one here, this RS4 document that I'm looking at is my notes for this video, and that's actually on another device, so it's seeing um, other devices as well. So here you can see I've actually switched machines here, and it's essentially it's the same view that I was looking at, and um, I've just switched machines. So my machines are synced together uh, through my Microsoft account, and uh, yeah, I can see there's the uh, the tab that I had opened previously on the other device and remote. Uh, using remote desktops to switch between devices. So it's a great way of being able to sync these things together and uh, be able to carry on where you left off. Much more useful than the, the old task viewer. Okay, what else is new? Well, there's something called nearby share. So let's have a look at that. So I pick in a file, I say share. And it's going to ask, looking for nearby devices. So there's my yoga book. I can select that, and if I flick back to the other device, so I can do save and open, there you can see it's receiving that file over Bluetooth. And um, yeah, great way of being able to share devices, uh, share content between nearby devices uh, via Bluetooth. Obviously, the film, the the machines are all going to need the Redstone Four update, the Spring Creators update for this to work. Um, so the two machines I'm using here, one's got Redstone Four, one's got Redstone Five, so that will work. And uh, it's an easy way of sharing between devices, and you don't have to the same user ID. You can just enable, enable that, and then I've got that picture. So there we go. So that works quite nicely. Now there are a lot of changes to Microsoft Edge. In fact, that's probably most of the changes in this build seem to be around Microsoft Edge and around reading. Um, so first we've got this new hub uh, for content. So there's our favorites and our reading list and our downloads um, are all in there. So it's a different way of looking. You notice it's all got this Fluent design in this with sort of that uh, slightly translucent effect on there. So the whole of Edge has got this sort of a redefined look. It's got this cleaner look. Some of the icons, even the when I hover my mouse over, they've got that sort of more uh, modern look that uh, that Windows 10 is introducing. They started with the last build and uh, the last release, and that's 
uh, more apparent in this build. But there's also a lot of improvements around reading. So let me fire up an EPUB book. This is an EPUB book. And you see this we've got this new toolbar, so we can save things in bookmarks. We can go full screens. We can even uh, read aloud. And we've got the content bar across the bottom here as well. Um, plus we've got an uh, option for notes, table of contents, searching through the contents. It's, it's a way better way of reading EPUB books than in the previous builds. Uh, maybe Microsoft have got some kind of device coming out that would be a good reader. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, certainly they've done a great job improving the reading. And same for PDF as well. So this is an EPUB book. Or PDF has also got the same treatment as well. So it's a lot better and the reading experience is much better. Let's see if we can uh, read something out on here. I'm not sure that will actually come through my recording software. But there you can see it going there. So there was the, the reading aloud. So EPUB books much better, PDFs much better in this build. Some other changes. Settings has had quite a lot of changes. Let's fire that up now. So again we've got this more this uh the acrylic design, the fluent design coming through, and things are also categorized better as well. So, for example, if I go to fonts here, this is a new section. Um, so these are, this replaces the old control panel way of working. Fonts are now viewable directly here in the new modern settings app. And, of course, it gives you nice um, the option of viewing them as well. And you, they're actually going to be able to publish new fonts in the Windows Store, the Microsoft Store. So you'll be able to buy fonts uh, if that's your thing. But it's all better here in the settings app, so it looks a, a lot better. So I mentioned about the, the Fluid Design. If I open the Start menu, you can see a good example of this. This Fluid Design is sort of everywhere. You see, the as I move the mouse over here, these, um, these Start Menu and items have got the Fluid Design on them. There's a little bit of tracking on that one, but a lot over there. You see that translucent effect, Action Center, has that effect too so they've applied that uh, all over the place microsoft edge as i showed you earlier with the um with that sort of view on there and even the, the if you noticed here you can see the blue back so you can even see the translucency on the the background on microsoft edge there you can see the blue and if i put this underneath And then it's not got the blue. It has got the blue there. So you can see even the, the tracking and everything. So it's um, it's not everywhere, but it's most of the places. And it's kind of com continue with the work that they started with the previous release of Windows 10. Windows Mixed Realities had quite a few changes. So Windows Mixed Reality, which Windows Mixed Reality was launched with um, the. Uh, for creators update in the spring creators update there's a new virtual home like a loft space it's called skyloft i think and it's a lot more modern looking environment than the old cliff house and it's good to have some alternatives really um so you can choose which environment you want to you want to go into other improvements uh include uh, integration with steam uh, VR, in, in haptic feedback in Steam apps and so, and so on. So there's a lot of under the hood changes for Windows Mixed Reality, some nice improvements. Right, we're flicking to tablet mode now because I'm going to look at the on-screen keyboard because the on-screen keyboard has been improved. So this is the on-screen keyboard that uh, was in the previous release, but new for this release, this was available in uh, US English, but not in other languages. It's now available in multiple languages. It is this enhanced keyboard or um, larger keyboard with the function keys on there, cap locks, um, with escape key, the tab key, every sort of all the keys that you would need, the Windows key and everything. Whereas before, you only had the option of this sort of cut down uh, keyboard. So that's good to see. You've also got the option of the split keyboard and the which was in the previous release and the mini keyboard which i actually quite like the, the mini keyboard this is pretty good in tablet mode as well so the, the um, pen input has been improved as well on this uh, on this release as well there's a new input panel on there um, so if you're used to using the pen then you've got a lot of um, it's a lot finer control i think
pretty good. I even recognise my bad handwriting. So good to see that that's been worked on. This is a good example of one of the categorised uh, settings as well. So here's the privacy section. There's a lot of options on this and uh, a good example of the way that uh, things look on here as well. You can go into diagnostics and feedback and you can actually have a look at what information is being sent back to Microsoft um, and you can delete the diagnostic data and so on. So uh, you've got a lot more control over the privacy options and the outbox settings as well are also um, improved to give you a better understanding of privacy controls. There's some other changes. My people has had improvements. Not that I know that many people use that, but you can uh, you can have more than three people on there. Um, home group has been removed. I know that's an improvement, but if you use home group for networking, that's now gone. There's no home group option anymore, so you've got to uh, come up with a different way of working with networking on there. Uh, those are the main changes. Really, the main thing is timeline. There's a lot of under the hood, under the hood improvements. Game Bar got a new, a new look. I managed to capture this uh, earlier on. It's hard to capture that because it kind of sits above the the uh, video recording software. But it's got a new look, and a new feel on it, and uh, this is so you can stream your games and take pictures of your games and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of changes to. Uh, Redstone 4, many of them are under hood, the main one really is timeline um, that's the biggest change, the sharing also is a is a nice option um, the nearby share I do like that as well, so those are the main ch changes, I found it to be very stable there's no major issues with it it's been stable for some time now really all the preview builds has been the odd issue but nothing major and I do like timeline, I think this is a, a great way of working, if you the, how you get the update, well that depends if you're a Windows Insider you'll, uh, you'll get that update first if you have the release preview setting then it'll go out to machines like Microsoft Surfaces when it gets released to um, to general Windows users. There's a Windows Update tool that will bring it down. You could get the ISO from Microsoft. Uh, there's a few different ways, or you can just wait and Windows Update will deliver it. And I think for most people, I would just wait, but there is the Update tool, and I'll have some separate articles on that as well. So thanks for watching this video. We're now on to Redstone 5. As you can see, I'm actually running Redstone 5 on this other machine, which has got the tabbed settings things and the tabbed kind of uh, sets it's called so a lot to come from that but uh, you can see that on future videos thanks for watching this one well, more on the digitallifestyle.com